if you're looking for a cruise line that has some beautifully sized and proportioned ships that hold only 2,000 guests, not 6,000, and that look sleek, not bloated, sturdy, not top-heavy, then Holland America Line are just what you're looking for. And the MS Eurodam, which we're going to show you in this video, sits right in the middle of their fleet range and is perfectly sized with just the right amount of dining and entertainment to give you the full cruising experience without the crowds and the feeling you're vacationing in a metropolis. We love these ships, we're going to show you why. Let's start our tour down on deck one right at the front of the ship in the World Stage Theatre. As you can see, the seating wraps almost 180 degrees around the stage, giving good views from wherever you sit in this theatre. These comfortable chairs make for an even more enjoyable experience here, although the brown leathery material looks a bit dated in comparison to the more modern HAL ships. Leaving the theatre and moving towards the centre of the ship, we reach the atrium, which down on deck one has these rather plush baby pink chairs. Very comfortable chairs, but in all honesty, it feels a bit wasted here. Although we can see how they might be useful for waiting to speak to one of the future cruises or reception desk people, we never found that we had to wait to do either of those things. We're not sure if guests would choose to come and sit voluntarily in this area with no natural light offered by large windows or focal points such as a bar or a piano. Taking the forward set of stairs up to deck two, there is a main entrance to the middle level of the World Stage Theatre one way and the casino the other. The casino, situated on the port side of the ship, is large and is open plan to the corridor to get from the theatre through to two of the main music entertainment venues on board. The first one of these running alongside the casino is the Holland America Line signature venue, Billboard on Board. With its dueling pianos, it showcases two of the many talented musicians and singers that entertain you on board Eurodam. A popular venue with the hottest seats in the house being these, located around the pianos, and if you don't want to get too close, comfortable sofas and armchairs away from the pianos, along with a bar serving this venue. Along this winding corridor showcasing some interesting artefacts, we reach the second of the signature music venues, BB King's Blues Club. With a bar at the entrance to the venue, the semicircular room has a series of booth style seating around the central dance floor, which also has seating around it. In the centre of the room is the large stage where most evenings the full live band entertains guests, although this venue is also used for comedy nights and daytime lectures, as well as the infamous Holland America Line Orange Party. You can see that in our experience vlog, we'll leave a link at the end. We have noticed that some of these venues are being rebranded as Rolling Stone Rock Lounges, which you might see on some of the other HAL ships of this size. Beyond the central elevators, we reach the Pinnacle Bar, serving hot drinks from early in the morning till late afternoon, and then becoming a cocktail bar in the evening. Opposite the bar is a speciality dining venue, the Pinnacle Grill. This extra charge restaurant is open every evening at a charge of $46 per person, and for lunch on sea days at a cost of $19 per person. And it's for exclusive use of sweet guests at breakfast time for no additional charge. Taking the corridor down the starboard side of the ship, you move through the art gallery and then onto the Explorer's Lounge, an area now largely used for trivia and daytime get-togethers. We were saddened that this area was once the Lincoln Center stage, but alas, it has been debranded and looks like it's gone for good. Such a shame. Reaching the end of the corridor and arriving at the aft of the ship, we are greeted with the lower level entrance to the main dining room, rather imaginatively titled The Dining Room. We absolutely love a traditional double height dining room, which can accommodate most of the guests in one single venue. There are a variety of table sizes for guests to choose whether to dine as a couple, a family, a large group, or share a table with other passengers. We also noted that the tables for two were much more spaced out than some of Hal's competitors, so that's a huge thumbs up from us. For us, the best seats in the house are the tables that make the most of that wonderful raked wake view from these floor to ceiling windows at the very aft of the ship. The striking centre staircase here leads up to the upper level of the dining room. The carpets in the main dining room are fabulously funky, which seems to be a Holland America Line obsession because you'll find a variety of incredibly colourful and interesting carpet designs throughout their ships. Just look down. Keep an eye on the carpets of this ship tour and you'll see what I mean. Not that I'm a carpet expert or anything. Leaving the dining room from the upper level on deck three, the starboard corridor on this deck takes you through the Photoshop 
to the main bar on board, the Ocean Bar, located around the central atrium. Spanning the entire width of the ship, with the central atrium void in the middle, this popular bar is the perfect place for a pre-dinner drink, with the pianist playing in the background, and a beige sea god Neptune looking sternly at your cocktail choices. How did he get that trident through security? Beyond the central elevators is the shops, a large area housing a variety of gifts and memorabilia for passengers to buy to take home and remember their cruise. HAL retail spaces are always generous, and to be fair, they do some great apparel here too. Walking through the middle of the shops takes you to a quiet corner of the ship, housing the spacious library and a cluster of meeting rooms with the familiar Hudson, Tasman, Half Moon and Stuyvesant names used for a variety of activities during each cruise, including things like religious gatherings, unhosted social gatherings and art classes, etc. This deck also has a full wraparound promenade deck, which we love, although for some inexplicable reason I didn't film it. So here's some clips of our Alaska vlog, which to be fair is much more interesting anyway. Decks 4 to 8 are all given over to accommodation, with the majority of rooms being balcony cabins, such as the one we stayed in. Here's a brief look at our cabin on deck 4. It was lovely. Taking the forward elevators up to deck 9, we find the fitness center and the greenhouse spa and salon. The gym is large and very well equipped with some lovely bow views. The next door spa houses plenty of treatment rooms and a small thermal spa area available at an additional cost, including a lovely hydro pool. Next door to the spa is the Lido pool area. This fully covered and very bright and inviting pool is headed up by two hot tubs and flanked by some comfortable sun lounges. The giant retractable roof makes it the perfect place for relaxing, whatever the weather. If you wanted a bit more privacy and a touch of extra luxury, there's a row of private cabanas running down the starboard side of the Lido pool area. These cost a small daily fee, but they look very nice indeed. At one end of the pool you will find the Lido bar and dive in, a casual dining venue serving burgers and hot dogs throughout the day. Plenty of tables and chairs to enjoy a snack or a drink, the pool is a happy hub of activity during the day. Located conveniently next door to the main pool is the Lido Market Buffet Restaurant. This was spacious, light and generally an all-round good buffet-style dining experience, and honestly we can't say that about every ship we've been on. Through the buffet, at the aft of Deck 9, is the lovely Sea View Pool with its expansive wake views, plethora of sun lounges, the Sea View Bar and the fabulous New York Pizza Outdoor Pizzeria. Deck 10 has a few more cabins at the front of the ship behind, which is the retractable roof of the pool and the kids club areas. I'm afraid we can't show you those today. Up to the top deck, Deck 11, the central elevators take you up to the outdoor sports court, looking out towards the aft of the ship. This is where you'll also get up close and personal to the signature double funnels that are a feature of Holland America Line ships below Pinnacle class. Moving indoors on the other side of the elevators, looking over the central pool is the lovely Tamarind Bar and Restaurant. Tamarind Restaurant is an extra charge speciality dining venue, offering Asian cuisine and a sushi bar, and in our opinion is well worth a visit. In fact, we enjoyed it so much we went twice. Though the restaurant is extra charge, the bar is open to all guests and offers lovely views and a quiet, relaxed environment, right at the top of the ship. We didn't find this bar until midway through our voyage, but it soon became one of our favourite places to go, especially at sunset. Looking over the pool roof from the bar, you'll see the other half of Deck 11 and the outdoor retreat sun deck. An extra charge area, this sun deck features private cabanas available to rent on a daily or whole cruise basis for a more luxurious and exclusive sunshine relaxation. Back indoors there are a handful of cabins on each side of the ship flanking the corridors necessary to access one of our favourite venues, the Crow's Nest Lounge and Coffee Bar. 
With its panoramic floor-length windows and comfortable seating, this is the perfect place to while away those sea day hours. Also home to the shore excursion desk and games room, this is a popular daytime venue, especially in inclement weather or on cold weather cruises, like the one we took to Alaska. Now you've seen the beautiful MS Eurodam, watch her adventures in Alaska by clicking this video next. You get to see Eurodam in action, us and everything we saw in Alaska. And believe me, it was incredible. Thank you.